Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me on these videos where I talk about some of the work that I've been up to and some of the other things that are going on within the Inkscape project. Um, so what I have been doing is basically finishing off the PDF stuff and doing the bug accelerator program. Um, but before we get into the details, I want to give a big thank you and a big shout out to all of the people that pay for my time to work on Inkscape. Basically, the deal is regular users contribute to me via Patreon and LibrePay, and then I get to spend more time working on Inkscape than I would have otherwise been able to. Uh, this has allowed users to basically have a say in what I work on. They can direct me towards bugs. They can focus my attention on specific features. And for the past year and a half or so, I've been working on the CMYK PDF output. Um, and a big thanks to them for that. Okay, so let's get into the details of what we've been up to. First of all, let's talk about the 1.4.1 release, or as we like to call it, the non-release. Um, so you may have seen some... Um, news articles that Inkscape 1.4.1 was released, but you'll notice if you go to the website, there is no such release. Uh, that's because we did build everything. We had it almost released, and then we immediately had a red flag situation where basically there was a critical error that was a blocker uh, that we had to cancel the release. Some of the releases still happened, like it went out to the PPA, so if you're subscribed to the stable PPA, you probably got access to it. Um, the critical issues were um, the fix that I put in for the splash screen that somebody added uh, to stop it crashing on macOS while it was tested by a number of macOS users, um, it still was crashing. So I immediately, within sort of 15 minutes of knowing that the error was still happening, I put in a further fix which did fix the issue. And uh, also, for everybody else, there were some issues that if the splash screen was enabled, Inkscape was now inaccessible from the command line in a lot of interesting ways. The same fix actually fixed that as well. So a lot of this comes from the splash screen being uh, incompatible in strange ways. And some of it is to do with the way GTK loading happens in sort of a mysterious way. But fortunately, we managed to f figure out what was going on and put a fix in. So, But because it's been tagged, and all of the builds have been made, we actually have to cut a new version. So we're trying to release 1.4.2, um, which will have all of the usual announcements and everything else. But it's basically the same thing as 1.4.1 with a couple of extra fixes put in. Uh, I think a couple of other fixes will sneak in as well, maybe even some translations, but we'll see. I'm currently trying to get uh, people inside the project to build those files necessary to put out the release, but you'll probably understand that volunteers are reticent to put in a bunch of time into making a release and then have to make another release very soon afterwards. It's you know it's a bit of a pressure point so hopefully we'll not be too delayed on getting that 1.4.2 release out because it does contain quite a lot of important fixes. Um, as far as the bug accelerator pro program goes, uh, I worked on that for a, for a little while fixing a bunch of stuff and now I've switched my attention to working on the CMYK PDF branch, uh, mainly because this branch really needs to be merged um, because it's large. Uh, although it doesn't change a lot of internals of Inkscape, keeping around a large branch is uh, risky because obviously as things change within Inkscape, you can end up with merge conflicts and somebody wants to work on a piece of the code base that you've changed dramatically. Um, so getting it merged sooner rather than later is important. So what, what I've managed to do is I've fixed all of the build problems uh, that were caused in between. There was this conflict between Mac and sorry, not Mac, between Windows and Linux about where libraries for Capri PDF would be built. Uh, that has been resolved. Had to learn a whole bunch about CMake in order to do that. Um, I've disabled Mac OS building entirely. Um, mostly because there are a whole host of other issues that need to be resolved to upgrade the LLVM and what is it called? Apple build programming program thing? I forget what it's called. You can tell I'm not an Apple developer. Um, but Rene is probably going to end up working on that to enable the functionality for macOS users. But for now, uh, that cannot be enabled uh, unless you build it yourself, I suppose. Um, the... Oh, shoot. Lost my train of thought now. One eternity later. 
Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So as well as the build issues, um, I learned a bunch of CMake in order to improve the test suites. So I, I wrote a bunch of tests, but they weren't actually integrated correctly because I wanted to have more advanced, more concrete tests. So I had to rewrite the test framework for CLI testing, uh, making it more consistent. A bunch of the research on CMake actually helped with that because it allowed me to understand how test fixtures work with CMake. This is basically where if you run one test that depends on another test having run, uh, it indicates that correctly so that when you are retesting things, um, it runs all of the necessary pieces, right? So the tests are now, that part is actually merged. I got that in first and then uh, my branch, my PDF branch now depends upon that in order to basically run all of the tests. It's very good. I've managed to clean up almost all of the tests. There's a couple of fixes that were necessary to fix some of the PDF rendering Basically, we had a bunch of tests for obscure things that happen in PDF with Cairo. Uh, we, we are reusing those same tests for Capy PDF because we want those same things to be fixed. There is one test remaining. And oh boy, is it a doozy. It's a complicated marker inheritance test for context fill and context stroke, right? Uh, PDFs do not have an idea of marker. They certainly don't have a context of, of uh, context fill and context stroke or context paints that we do in SVG. And the rules in which they apply have to be translated into PDF land. And our code for Cairo was bonkers and doesn't apply to copy PDF at all. So I have to go back to the drawing board and actually rewire a whole bunch of this work in order to change some of the assumptions that I was making about how how inheritances were working. Mostly I was depending upon PDF inheritance doing the right thing, which almost entirely works for almost all case cases. But for uh, context fill and context stroke, it's the problem is, is that you need to be able to apply um, the fill and stroke of the original object that the marker is applied to hop and skipping over any um, parent or ancestor elements inside of the, the marker and also they can swap positions so you can have a stroke applied to a fill and a fill applied to a stroke obviously none of this complexity is available in pdf so it all has to be sort of worked out ahead of time in order for you to basically paint all of the markers correctly uh, with caching because of course you don't want to draw out the same marker of the same color with the same style a gajillion times. You would much rather prefer draw it once in the PDF and then tell it to paint it a bunch of times. That's an efficiency. Hopefully we can retain as much efficiency as possible. But with the complexity of the code, I'll be happy with just having it function and we can deal with uh, making it faster or smaller PDF files later. Okay, so that's what's been going on. Um, there's some other things going on with the Google Summer of Code pro project. We've got a bunch of students this year who have signed up and we'll be looking through the, those as mentors to find the best ones. And um, yeah, please leave a comment below about what you're excited for. Uh, there are uh, builds if you want to test the CMYK PDF work today, especially win Windows builds. Uh, no builds for Mac, sorry about that. And uh, yeah, I guess I will see you next time.